Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Becoming More Me, the podcast for ADHD entrepreneurs and professionals that want to be more and do less. These episodes are here to inspire you to become the version of yourself you feel called to be and to let it be easy. I'm your host, Teresa Lear Levine. I am an EFT master practitioner, hypnotherapist, international best selling author of Becoming More Me, Tapping into Success, Subconscious Secrets of an ADHD Entrepreneurial Mom. And I absolutely love exploring different ways that we can get out of our own way, shed light on our shadows, and really call our power back. Now, have you ever wondered what separates those who succeed through means of hustling and striving and pushing and anxiousness from those who succeed from a place of ease and joy and pleasure? Well, it's the ease and joy and pleasure, obviously, but why do those that hustle and strive and push resist it so much? We're gonna go into all of that today because I would imagine if you're anything like me, you've spent a lot more time on the hustle, strive, and push side of things than the ease and flow. So I'm going to provide you all sorts of resources and actionable steps today so that you can begin to allow more pleasure and flow to direct your success. It all starts now. All right, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects today, and that is pleasure. I personally believe that pleasure is one of the most underrated motivators that we have and that the majority of the world is really not using it to its fullest power or potential. And in that, missing out on so much goodness. So today we're going to talk about a lot of different aspects of pleasure, and I'm going to give you some different things you can try, and we'll see where it goes. So I'll start by saying that I, for one, am definitely one who resisted pleasure, spent so much more time in my masculine energy, and trying to adapt my world, my success, my processes, my routines to things that were designed from a male perspective and a masculine perspective and for them first. Um, And so a lot of what I've done over the last few years is redesigned the way that I show up, the way that I schedule myself, the different practices that I do so that they allow more of the feminine energy of pleasure to come in. And let's just be clear that There's masculine and feminine energy in both men and women, and the feminine energy tends to be more the one of pleasure. So it doesn't matter whether you're a man or woman listening to this, we can all call upon the energy of pleasure to fuel our success, not only in the businesses that we are running or our professions, but also in our personal life and our relationships. And I know that a lot of times when I start talking about pleasure, people immediately, we go to like our sixth grade mindset and we're like, oh, we're talking about sex. Yeah, sure, absolutely. There's plenty of pleasure to be had and found there, but there's no reason why pleasure cannot be part of every aspect of our life. And that's where I think we are really underusing it. Honestly, we're underusing it in sex too. I don't know a whole lot of people that are actually getting maximum pleasure out of their sex life. So that is another podcast that I will do if there is interest and I would be happy to because that fascinates me as well. But today is more about how can we leverage the power of pleasure for success? How can we leverage the power of pleasure with things like planning and organization that tend to be real stumbling blocks for those of us who have real busy minds or diagnosed ADHD. And what does that look like? So as a woman in her mid-40s and attracting many clients like myself, give or take 10 or so years and some certain attributes, I work with a lot of women who want more pleasure in their lives and businesses. And yet, when I ask them what they enjoy, 
they usually can't answer the question. It's a sad truth, but most of us just aren't connected to what we actually enjoy. We've been conditioned into what we're supposed to enjoy or what other people enjoy, but most adults don't really know what, if they had the time or ability to choose, what hobby would they choose or what would they love to do with an hour that they couldn't spend doing work or chores or something that is not pleasurable. And I encourage you to think about that and get to know yourself in the ways that you'll actually know the answer to that because it feels really good to have connection to what you know you take pleasure in. The other thing is that so many of us have lost the ability to take pleasure in what we have. We're so focused on what the next thing is or the next level or what have you that we have forgotten that enjoying, appreciating, having gratitude and fully feeling into everything that is already here is exactly the magical recipe that attracts more of it. That is just basic law of attraction 101, just playing into the field of intention, the quantum field, the abundance that is there for us and the way that it reflects our thoughts, and our actions. So that is super important. So the more pleasure that we allow, the more we get to experience. And I find it really fascinating that we have this ceiling for pain. There's literally only so much pain our human bodies can handle before we die in this body. However, we have endless capacity for pleasure. It's limitless. There is no ceiling except for the one that we have created with our thoughts, our conditioning, our programming, all of that. So I often find, and God knows I found this with myself, that I had low pleasure tolerance, that other feelings would start to creep in when I would start yielding to pleasure, those conditionings that might say, well, that's enough, or you're not worthy of all of that, you've had your share, those kind of voices. And so that is the unlearning we have to do and the reprogramming in a different way that is so beneficial with things like EFT tapping and hypnotherapy and a lot of what I love doing in my sessions with clients. But what it basically comes down to is we're suspicious of pleasure. We're suspicious of things being easy, and therefore we have a really low tolerance. So the script that's running underneath of our avoidance of it is one of, uh, you know, waiting for the other shoe to drop, that kind of thing. Hey, you know, better not enjoy yourself too much. Something bad might happen if you just let this be easy or let it be fun or let it feel good. So we put our guard up and again, we have that fight, flight, flee sort of thing happening where we don't want to let our guard down to pleasure. We're suspicious of it. And part of the reason for this and what I see, have seen in myself and my clients is that we were born with this inner knowing, this intuition about how good pleasure was, how easy it was. I mean, think about babies. They lay around. I know as a baby, I loved just like being naked and rolling around and enjoying how good it felt to be on the shag carpet and just spread out and sprawl and just feel the goodness of being alive. I soaked up that pleasure. So I know that there was a time in my life where it was easy and it was natural and it was part of my day. And babies are like that. They know that the food's gonna come to them and the clothes and the changes and all that are going to be taken care of. And they just bask in the amazingness of being. And I love being around babies for that reason. They get it. And they're so much closer to that source energy from which we were created and understanding their worthiness of that, their inherent 
value, and so much more. So then what happens, we get a little bit older, and for some people it's it's very early in their life, and for some it's years later, and then we start to question our intuition. Maybe those things that we are doing that feel good aren't being validated. It's quite common for people to love seeing a baby doing those kind of things, but a lot of times if adults see a two or a three-year-old basking in the pleasure of his or her body, they may be told to cover it up or stop it or that's not appropriate or, hey, we need to get ready to do this thing or that thing. And they get rushed along and all that's where conditioning and programming happens. And it happens in so many different ways. Those are some very vague examples. So we start to question those heart reactions, those gut reactions. And from there, we actually start to lose that inborn knowing, that authenticity that we came here with. And that's also where we start to lose what we truly like and what we truly dislike. And it's not just what your head tells you you're supposed to like, it's, it's how you've been conditioned. So society often tells us that success comes through hard work. It comes through sacrifice. Sometimes it comes through pain. So we get all of these messages when we grow up that decondition us and detach us from the pleasure and joy that we came here with and for what we had no reason to stop using to fuel things. So we're born with it, we get detached from it, here we are as adults finding our way back to it, and it's just as good now as when we were babies, I promise. And there's so many more ways that we can understand to leverage it now as adults that diving back into it is a joy. And here's the thing, all of these different studies show what an amazing natural motivator pleasure is. And when we can make the thing that we have to do more fun and pleasurable, then we are naturally more motivated to do them, more relaxed while we are doing them, and more successful as a result of doing them. So once you learn how to get it back into your life, it really does become this crucial ingredient for success in life and business, and it certainly becomes an important ingredient for having a meaningful and fulfilling life and business. So then we can combine that with nourishing our nervous system, something I'm obviously really passionate about, and then we become open to even more, more experiences, more pleasure, greater capacity, and that was what was necessary for me, combining nervous system nourishment, nervous system regulation with work that was around expanding my capacity for pleasure. It was really important to incorporate that because part of what I needed to learn was how to slow down. I definitely was not of the mind that I could do more if I slowed down or I could be more if I slowed down. I definitely had not yet adopted a chapter of one of my books, which is Slow is the New Fast. And now I believe and I know it to the core. So slowing down helps our body enter a state of relaxation. And in that state, it can flourish and fuel our success. So very important. So I invite you to, you know, after you listen to this, or you could pause it right now, to just take a moment and explore what were you taught as a child? What did you notice in your family of origin? How did they interact with pleasure, slowness, being versus doing? Was it even something that you talked about? And I invite you into exploring that conditioning. What if everything that we have been conditioned to believe about working hard, hustling, putting off things that feel good, or never slowing down to enjoy the simple pleasures of life because they are not productive, what if it's all a lie? And what if the most untapped into resource and the best driving force behind our success is actually pleasure? So I invite you to ponder that. And then I also invite you to maybe 
make a short list of why you resist it, what your beliefs about it are, what your suspicions about it are, and that kind of thing. And then I have an awesome resource that's going to go hand in hand with this podcast over in my school community, the Becoming More Me community on school, which you can find if you're not already a member by going to www.school, that's S-K-O-O-L dot com forward slash discovery. From there, type in my name, Teresa, T-H-E-R-E-S-A, Lear, L-E-A-R, Levine, L-E-V-I-N-E, and you will see the Becoming More Me community pop right up. You can click there to join. It's totally free. And then if you're already a member or once you join, all you need to do is hop into the classroom right there and you will find an amazing mini course that I created to go along with this called the Pleasure and Flow mini course for ADHD entrepreneurs. And that is going to give you a full workshop on pleasure as fuel for success. It's also going to give you another full workshop on planning with pleasure, lots of resources. There's EFT tapping rounds. There's one specifically designed for removing your subconscious blocks to pleasure. It combines EFT tapping and nervous system regulation with some hypnotic visualization. So if you made that short list that I just asked you to make on why you resist pleasure, You'll be able to personalize it for yourself and you'll be amazed at how different you feel after just spending 10 minutes with me doing that one thing in the mini course. And then there's tons of other EFT rounds that you can do in there. And there's real life applications of this and so much more. It's an amazing mini course. I highly suggest joining and checking it out. All of it is absolutely free. So pleasure has actually been linked to causing success. And for me, when I wrote my book, I had already tried writing it several times. Many of you have heard me talk about this story, but I tried it those several times that failed through more of a lens of hustle, strive, achieve, get this thing done. I want to be a published author. I know I have something to offer the world. And gosh, it's hard to write this darn thing. And I would start, I would get a little bit done, and I would stop because it never felt aligned. It never felt like the heart and soul project and the energy that I really wanted to deliver to my readers. And I certainly didn't visualize anything like the cover of the book, which if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, you can see in my background where it's just oh, it's so... It's pleasurable to look at the cover. There's pleasure in the book. And I made a commitment to write the book through the lens of pleasure, meaning I didn't write a word of it if I was in that masculine energy, if I was tensed, if I was in that hustle and strive mode, wearing my shoulders as earrings, any of that. It all got written through a lens of pleasure, ease, and flow. It got written through the energy of, I think it's going to be easy. It got written through the energy of, let's just flip it to appreciation, whatever it is that's going on right now. And I write about so much of that in the book. I didn't even know that would be part of the book. It ended up becoming a part of what I was actually writing. And I immersed myself in Mama Gina's pleasure boot camp during the entire time I wrote it as an extra way to be assisted. So if you're not familiar with Regina, Regina Thomashour, she is the author of uh, the book Pussy, which is a reclamation. And it's a great book to read. If you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. And it talks a lot about pleasure in sexual and other ways. And her pleasure boot camp was life-changing for me and taught me so many ways to get pleasure off of the back burner where I had been letting it simmer and only taking the lid off to get a little whiff here and there as it simmered and move it to the front burner, get that lid off and let it infuse all of the areas of my life and my business as well, which really made a difference. It's amazing how bringing that into my work and to my clients as we worked on other things really, really elevated their outcomes. So that's all the proof I needed. But some of the things you want to consider 
when you're bringing it into your life are ways that you can incorporate it with daily rituals, as well as the ways that you can swap out doing for being, even if it's just a few minutes a day. How your mind wanders throughout the day, we need to take a look at, hey, when your mind wanders, does it go to a pleasant dream, a fantasy, something good, or does it go to these catastrophic thoughts or these really unlikely scenarios? Where is your mind going? And then the other thing we want to look at is how can we bring more gratitude, more appreciation, more bragging about what we are accomplishing and doing into the energy of our ecosystem. So important. I know that for whatever reason, we love to avoid bragging about the things that are going right and going well in our lives. It's as if, hey, you know what? Somebody else out there doesn't have this going for them, so I shouldn't mention it because they might feel bad. But the real truth is that the more that we share, the more that we brag on ourselves and uplift other people, then the more everyone is uplifted, the more that other ADHD entrepreneurs get to understand what's possible and how good it can feel by us saying, yeah, you know, I, I brag that I did this thing and I did it amazingly well and it turned out better than I expected and now I'm going to try this next thing and I feel great about it. And there should be more of that energy instead of trying to hide our radiance and our beauty and our power and our pleasure, we should be amplifying it. Because what does that for you or me is going to extend out to those people that are around us. It's going to feel good. It's going to inspire them to do the same. And I know that when I started to brag about things that were going right, I worried that, oh, they're going to think I'm just like really high on myself or I think like I'm the best or whatever. And I never got greeted with that. I always got greeted with people who were excited to hear about my wins and then also excited that they had a safe place to share theirs. You know, we don't have as many places to just toot our horns and exclaim our wonderfulness as much as we would like to. And there's no reason. Why not? We can be the ones that create the change there and that elevate the amount of pleasure that gets experienced by everyone. And when we start to do that, we can also identify the places that we still need to grow, the things that still make us feel uncomfortable. And it gives us an opportunity to do beautiful work there, shadow work, expansion work, nervous system work, subconscious work, and that's really where it gets so expansive and so delightful and so wonderful because we can use pleasure to access the pain that we haven't uncovered yet and work to shed light on it or heal it or whatever it's calling for us to do with it. And I think that's just a beautiful, beautiful part of this because I'm sure we all have memories or traumas, things that have happened to us over the years that really make resisting pleasure seem like a great idea. And of course those things do. Of course they made it that way for us. But we're adults now. Those things are not happening at the moment. And it's time for us to decide how we want to live now in the present, the only place where our power has any power. So we can leak it on back to those things that happened to us. We can be forever victims of those things, or we can call the power back and create a new reality right here and right now. And then as ADHD entrepreneurs, we can see that trickle in to our relationships. We can see that trickle into the expansion and success of our businesses. We can see that uplift all different areas of our health our wealth, our relationships, our well-being, all of those things. And once I started to expand capacity and see that happen, that's when I was really able to begin applying pleasure to my planning methods and my organization, things that always felt like they tripped me up as an ADHD entrepreneur, mom, wife, person, just 
organization was always felt difficult. It always felt hard. It always felt like something where, oh, if I want to get organized, I'm going to have to push. I'm going to have to hustle. I'm going to have to have so much extra energy in order to do this thing. My lists had lists and I never knew what to focus on. And so I'd procrastinate. All of these things are so incredibly common. And yet pleasure can be the anecdote for them and a much easier way through. And there are at least half a dozen reasons why. And one is like I mentioned earlier, that pleasure boosts our motivation and our engagement. It is such a natural motivator. And also it reduces stress and burnout. That's huge in and of itself. If that was the only reason, it would be worth bringing more pleasure into your life because balancing things out with pleasure reduces stress. And when we have our tasks infused with pleasure and purpose, the feeling of it being burdensome is lifted. So we actually become more productive over the long term because we don't have as much anxiety and then we can prevent burnout from happening in the first place. Another reason why it's so beneficial is that the positive emotions that pleasure brings forth enhance our cognitive function. So then we actually have better execution, better executive function, better goal achievement. And for an ADHD entrepreneur, who wouldn't want that? Um, and it improves our goal setting and our achievement. Any goal that you have that is tied to pleasure in the pursuit of it and has that enthusiasm is going to be so much more motivating and enjoyable to achieve. And then it also fosters this positive feedback loop. So you naturally create positive reinforcement. And that means that when you successfully complete enjoyable tasks, then you're motivated to do that again with further and future productive behaviors. So you're creating a positive feedback loop. And it also enhances, you know, if you're working with other people or, you know, if we're talking about being in family or relationship, pleasure enhances relationship and team dynamics. It enhances collaboration and networking and makes those things more fun. Instead of people trying to be in relationship with or collaborate with somebody who is in their hustle strive, get it done energy, bringing in some more pleasure. It's like, oh yeah, I want some more of that. Everybody wants some more of that. Like who doesn't? So it really enhances the dynamics there. If you're interested in more of the ways that pleasure can be infused in your planning. This is also a large part of the pleasure and flow mini course that I mentioned earlier in this episode that you can get in my free school community. So again, and I spelled it all out earlier, I'm just going to say the links this time through. If you go to school, that's S-K-O-O-L, I'll spell that out because that one's tricky. If you go to school.com forward slash discovery, and then you type in my name, Teresa Lear Levine, you will see the Becoming More Me community pop up. You can join or access it there. And then you will see in the classroom there of the community, the Pleasure and Flow mini course for ADHD entrepreneurs. And in that, you will find all sorts of resources for planning with pleasure, including my planning sheets that I use every day of the year that are completely customizable. I had such a hard time forever. I would buy all different planners, try all different planners, usually after several weeks, fail at using the planner, feel guilty for buying the planner, try something else, and that would usually not work within several weeks also. So eventually I got to the point where I made these planning sheets. I've actually had several episodes specifically on how I use these in the past and they've gone through many upgrades over the years, but I have made them and I share a template that's completely customizable and then also teach on how to use 
use those in the Planning with Pleasure workshop that is part of the mini course. So if you want to learn more about how to bring more pleasure into your planning, if you want to hear my top six tips for planning with pleasure, they are all in there, as well as some great EFT that will help you to overcome your resistance to planning in general. Uh, I find that is one of the biggest resistances that I hear about over and over again from people. And it is one of my most popular YouTube videos, the original episode and planning round that I did, EFT for overcoming resistance to planning. So in the mini course, In my community, there is a brand new updated round of EFT that will help you to literally bust through your resistance. It is a great round to do right before you sit down with my planning sheets or with whatever planner actually works for you. That's the most important thing. And, you know, do a brain dump and get everything organized or have a super productive day. It's an awesome EFT round to get you ready for that. And I also take you through all of my planning tools and resources, how I use them, how you can use them, how I like to reverse engineer my goals so that I can really chunk down what it takes to achieve them. Because I know that when I look at a big goal or something that's just written on a to-do list that I know has a hundred steps in it before I finish it, I won't even start it because it's too overwhelming to me and I haven't yet figured out where to start. So I actually created these really awesome dream achievement reverse engineering sheets. I call them DARE sheets. And those are also available in the mini course. So all of this is right over there in my school community. I would love to hear from you and what your relationship with pleasure is like or what you would like your relationship with pleasure to be like, because I'm always creating new resources to help and serve in this area. And your feedback and your input is always so meaningful and valuable to me. So you can feel free to send me a DM once you join the community on school, or you can always hit me up over on Instagram. My handle is Teresa Lear Levine, and I love to hear from you. I know you have so many choices when it comes to the podcast that you listen to, so I'm so glad you chose to listen to this episode of Becoming More Me, and I look forward to sharing future episodes with you. We release episodes every Thursday, something new every week to help you with your curiosities, your goals, and getting out of your own way in this life as an ADHD entrepreneur or professional. Take care and thanks for listening. Thanks for spending some of your precious time with me today. If you loved this episode, please leave a review or simply share it with someone else who would get great benefit from it too. If you share on social media, please tag me so I can personally connect and thank you. Until next time, keep taking bold and brave steps towards becoming more of who you want to be in this world. You are capable, you are worthy, and you are enough. And if your inner critic is still trying to argue with those facts, hit me up. We've got work to do.